Welcome to The Dementia Doctor. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Verma. I'm a board-certified neurologist with fellowship training in adult behavioral neurology, as well as special qualification in child neurology. This is a channel that is dedicated to individuals suffering from cognitive decline, as well as their loved ones and caregivers. In, in this particular video, we are going to review two groundbreaking Alzheimer's drugs, that is lecanemab and denanemab. And we are going to do a head-to-head -head comparison for these drugs based on their mechanism of action, their clinical trials data, their safety profile, as well as practical considerations. Now, in my discussions with patients, practical considerations is something that gets most time during the patient discussions. And the reason being that these are fairly intensive drugs and they need fairly frequent infusions, MRIs, as well as safety monitoring. And that is the reason that one has to take into account how would this look when I get these infusions? What changes I have to do with my lifestyle to get these medications? So make sure to stay around till the end of the video to hear more about practical considerations. So we'll start by talking about mechanism of action. Now, both of these drugs are called anti-amyloid. So they attack this amyloid protein that is forming in our brains. Uh, well, not in our brains, but in someone who has Alzheimer's disease. So. What is amyloid? Amyloid is a bad protein that starts accumulating outside the brain cells in individuals who have Alzheimer's disease. Now, this protein is something that forms initially with a few fibers of this protein developing, and then eventually these fibers accumulate, keep accumulating over the course of years, and eventually it forms a big tumbleweed-like structure, which is what we call as amyloid plaque. Now, how these two drugs differ is which stage of this formation of the amyloid plaque are they attacking. Lecanemab attacks the very early stages of the amyloid plaque formation. So it attacks when we have just a few fibers. We also call them protofibril stage of the plaque formation. So in that way, it avoids the formation of a fully formed plaque or that tumbleweed structure. Denanemab, on the other hand, goes and just removes the fully formed plaque. So that's how they differ in their uh, mechanism of action. Now, going over their clinical trials data, for lecanemab, we had the Clarity AD trial, and for denanemab, we had the Trailblazer ALS2 trial. Now, both of these trials included individuals who had early Alzheimer's disease, as well as evidence of amyloid deposition in their brain. And what we found in these studies was that when individuals with, uh, in the Clarity AD trial, when they got lecanemab, as compared to individuals who got placebo, their rate of cognitive decline was slower by 27%. For denanemab, this number was 35%. So you may say, well, denanemab is looking better than lecanemab. Well, not yet. We haven't looked at the safety profile or the practical considerations yet. So now that we have reviewed the mechanism of action as well as the clinical trials data, let's talk about the safety profile. In terms of the safety profile for both of these medications, we know that uh, there is a very specific side effect that can occur with these anti-amyloid medications, and that is called as ARIA. ARIA stands for Amyloid Related Imaging Abnormalities, and it comes into two different varieties, ARIA-E, that stands for edema or swelling in your brain, and ARIA-H, that stands for hemorrhage or bleeding in your brain. Now, with lecanemab, the inc incidence of developing ARIA-E was 12.6%, with denanemab almost double, 24%. With lecanemab, the incidence of developing ARIA-H was 17%, and with denanemab, it was 31%, so again, almost double. So when we look at the safety profile, lecanemab fares better than denanemab. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the most exciting part of this video and the most important part that goes into decision making when you are deciding whether to go forward with these medications or not. And that is the practical considerations. And we're going to talk about different aspects of the considerations that you need to take into account before you decide to go forward with these medications. 
First being the frequency of infusion that you need to be doing. Second is the frequency of getting the MRI sequencing. And last but not the least, also talking about the cost as well as potential for discontinuation. So when we talk about the frequency of getting these medications for lecanemab, you need to go to the infusion center two times in a month, so once every two weeks. For denanemab, you need to go to the infusion center once every month. So denanemab, a little better than lecanemab. In terms of the MRI sequencing, with lecanemab, you need to get an MRI done before your 5th, your 7th, your 14th, and your 26th infusion. So it is a different schedule as compared to denanemab, where you have a very intensive MRI monitoring in the initial stages. And the reason is that we see more incidence of aria with denanemab. So we get uh, MRI before the second, the third, the fourth, the seventh infusion of denanemab. Now, this is when everything goes well with your infusions. You're not experiencing any side effects. You're not having any new symptom that might be representative of aria. But your provider may ask you to get more MRIs if you develop any symptom that is concerning for aria and you may need to rush to an ER to get an emergency MRI to make sure that you're not developing these, this side effect. So you have to take into consideration, do I live uh, close enough that I can go to the ER, get an emergent MRI, and get the specific sequences that my provider would like to see to make sure I'm not developing the side effects. So that is a very important consideration for many individuals who may not live very close to uh, a facility where they can get an MRI done. Now, moving on to the cost. In terms of the cost, these two medications are both covered by Medicare for about 80% of their cost, and uh, but that only accounts for the medications, not for going to the infusion center, using the infusion facility, um, getting your MRIs, and uh, the MRI schedule, as we discussed just now, can also include additional MRIs based on how you do on these drugs. So for, for lecanemab, the annual cost for just the drug itself comes out to be about 26,500. For the nanemab, it comes out to be about $32,000. Now, when you look at these numbers again, lecanemab looks better, but that is not necessarily so because we are now going to talk about the discontinuation potential. And that is where for lecanemab, we do not have the data to, to say what to do after you have you've started the medication. So there is a chance that you might be on this infusions uh, indefinitely. For denanemab, on the other hand, we have data that you can stop the medication once amyloid is cleared from your brain. So in the long run, that 32,000 is probably cheaper than $26,000 yearly because for denanemab, you can at least stop the drug once you know that your amyloid has been removed from the brain. So hopefully this video was helpful. In the next few videos, we are going to talk about the eligibility criteria for getting either of these drugs, as well as the clinical trials data for these drugs. Till then, have a good day and take care.